This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are in Washington, D.C. today. We are joined by Suzanne Bonamici. She is a member of the United States Congress representing the beautiful state of Oregon. It must be hard living in a beautiful state like Oregon. It's quite <laughs> easy. It's quite it's easy, exactly. It is a beautiful I state. I can imagine. A wonderful state. And I want to speak with you about one of your committee assignments. You're on the Education Committee. Yes. And I'm the father of two daughters, seventh grade, fifth grade. And I know a lot of parents are feeling frustration and confusion about those standardized tests yes, and, the, yeah, and the effectiveness of them. Talk to us about what you're doing on the question of standardized tests and trying to reform or streamline. Sure. Please. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say public education is such uh, an important part of right. what we do in our communities and our society to give every child an opportunity to learn and mm. succeed and thrive. So my commitment to public education goes way back before my time as a policymaker. Mm -hmm. So I'm honored to serve on the Education and right. Workforce Committee. And we have been spending time, uh, this Congress working on uh, what we can do about uh, the, the high stakes testing. Right. Now that conversation comes up as part of something called the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Now that's a law that was passed about 50 years ago mm. as part of the war on poverty wow. to try to make education more equal and fair for students across the country. Now, people today know it as no child left behind, right? And that came about in uh, uh, a different version right. of, uh, of that bill. So what we're doing with the no child left behind is trying to make it so that it gets back to its original mm. purpose of equity for students across the country. So uh, Title I funding for sure. low-income schools comes through that. We want to make sure that those schools that serve high concentrations of low-income students get the additional assistance that they need. But with regard to the standardized test, right. I actually have bipartisan legislation nice. it's called SMART. Right. Start making right. assessments reliable and timely. <laughs> okay, Smart. go ahead. So uh, what that does is fewer, better assessments. And let's be specific because yes. there is this sense as part of No Child Left Behind or otherwise that it's a drill and kill atmosphere. You got to get them to perform for that standardized test and right. there are so many of them. There are so many of them because there's tests that are required by the federal government, right. the state government, then districts. Right. So, you know, our teachers need to be assessing students. Right. But assessments should be uh, to inform instruction so that they know where the students need to improve. So mm -hmm. the SMART Act will help school districts do an audit of mm. how many assessments there are. It will help teachers learn assessment literacy so they can make better use of the assessments. So I have been an advocate for, for moving away from that high stakes testing and putting so much importance on just the classes that are tested. How does Common Core interact with what you're describing? Because as you know, for the vast majority of the country which has adopted Common Core, there are new types of standardized tests. Exactly. And some would say to the benefit, maybe playing in conjunction with what you're doing because these are standardized tests that are adaptive. They look at your answers and then sure. you move on based upon what either you got it right. right or wrong. And Common Core is looking for a deeper knowledge as opposed to just surface knowledge. So Critical thing. Yeah. Well, first of all, Oregon has had adaptive testing for a long time. Oh, I didn't time. know that. Okay. Yes, we have been ahead of the curve. Of course you Oregon, have. Of course leaders. you have. So we've had adaptive testing okay. for a long time. So let me back up to, to get to your question. Common Core is about high standards. Mm. And we all want high standards for our students. Where my concern comes in is if there are too many high stakes associated with that testing, if the tests are too long and there are too many of them. So again, we need to get back to fewer, better assessments and aim for those high standards. But we can't be doing that at the cost of things like cutting uh, important classes like career and technical education mm -hmm. classes where students get that hands-on learning. Uh, classes like art and music that uh, really lead to a well-rounded education and a well-rounded uh, citizenry. Now, how do we get to a place though where the pendulum doesn't swing so far the other way that we don't have diagnostic tests 
to see where our students oh, are. We will. Right, absolutely, yeah. and we well. do need to have those assessments. And uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about in the committee is making sure that we have uh, really good training and education mm -hmm. programs for our teachers. Because when you have a great teacher, that teacher is going to be assessing the student and know where the student needs to improve. I want to shift gears a bit and, and speak about a sea change in our nation that I would have never predicted. And that is America's view of LGBT Americans. Right. Who would have thunk five, 10 years ago that we would see marriage equality in many states in the union? Right. Right. That is a wonderful development for those that are part of that community. But there are those that are part of that community that are older. Right. They didn't get married. Um, their families may not be around. Their families may have rejected them. I know that you're looking at that community like a, with a laser sure. beam and trying Absolutely. to serve them and their needs. Yes. Talk to me about that. Right. Well, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the uh, aging population in general. Yes, you are. Uh, but I've had some great conversations, mm -hmm. specific conversations with our LGBT seniors mm -hmm. because there are issues that come up in things like home care, right. assisted living facilities to make sure that nobody, nobody uh, faces discrimination uh, in their older years. It so the Older Americans Act mm -hmm. is something that I'm working on, and that's a law that deals with these important programs. You know, it's so important for people to be able to live out their lives with dignity, uh, whether they're in their home or an assisted right. living uh, facility or an independent care facility. So what we want to do with the Older Americans Act is make sure that those programs are available to help our seniors from uh, Meals on Wheels. And tell me about yes. Meals on Wheels. I understand that you recently took a trip and visited, uh, is that right, yes, uh, Meals been, on Wheels? I've been visiting uh, yeah. Meals on Wheels okay. centers and senior community centers. <laughs> Uh, in in the district I'm honored right. to represent. So, sure. so I visit schools and I visit senior it's both centers, sides, right, right. Both sides as of the well spectrum. as farms and of small course. businesses. So, but but you yeah. know, Meals on Wheels, it, it, it's an iconic program. It is. It and, and so is tell so me about important. what you've seen. I feel like was it Beaverton? Where did you go recently? Oh, I've been many Everywhere. places. Okay. I've been many places. Say, yeah. But the Meals on Wheels programs mm. are so important because. Oftentimes, when the uh, person who's delivering that meal to mm -hmm. the senior, that might be the only person yeah. that senior sees that day. And so it's the nutrition, but it is also the social interaction mm -hmm. and communication. And our senior centers that have community meal programs, they don't just offer the meal. They have discussion groups and right. classes. And that is so important for our aging population. A and with regard to the LGBT senior, even though the country does seem to be evolving on this issue, assuming that you have specific protections in the more Older Americans Act, are your friends on the Republican side supportive? We're working on that. Okay. Uh, I don't think anybody supports discrimination. So okay. if we look at it that way, we don't want to discriminate. We want to make sure that everyone is able to age with dignity. And where do you go from here with this? Because obviously it's an issue that is important to you. You want to help all seniors yes. regardless of where right, they right. may stand on any issue, be that as it may. Or, well, we're, yeah. we're working on the Older Americans Act mm -hmm. and we're working with the, the administration uh, to make sure that that no one faces discrimination. So the Older Americans Act goes through the Education and Workforce Committee. Explain so that. How does that work? I, that's just one of those jurisdictional <laughs> okay. things. So, mm -hmm. so um, I, I plan to continue to work on that and see if we can get that through. I know that the Senate is working on it as well. So. Her name is Suzanne Bonamici. She is a member of the United States Congress, representing significant portions of the beautiful state of Oregon. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We thank you so much for joining us on Charter Local Edition.